Hello, you're watching AAN News, and I'm Ingrid Giannata. The City Council passed a measure that will put Chicago's Asian businesses back in the game. Four years ago, a federal court ruling took Asian Americans out of the Minority Set-Aside program because the judge found no proof of discrimination against Asian American companies. But last week, Mayor Daley and the City Council passed the amendment that will open doors for Asian American contractors. Alderman Stone, congratulations. Job well done. Asian Americans in Chicago have something to cheer about. We're really excited. We're quite happy. It's been uh, a long time coming. We certainly recognize that it's been difficult for the city to find evidence of discrimination. But finally, uh, after many years of advocacy, bringing in con uh, contractors, bringing testimony and additional evidence, we have enough evidence and the city did the right thing. The right thing meant the re-inclusion of Asian Americans as minorities when it comes to bidding for city contracts. There was evidence of discrimination in the areas of financing and interest rates. For example, low denial rates for Asian firms are 50% higher than white males. Asian pay a half a, a half a point higher rate even after controlling for differences in characteristics. Uh, the evidence was communicated at the last committee meeting by several members of the Asian community. Three years ago, a federal court decision took Asian Americans out of the equation, but now, with Alderman Bernie Stone at the forefront of this issue, all of that has changed. Today is an historic moment for Asian Americans, and they are once again included in our minority business enterprise ordinance. This change will affect mainly construction firms owned by Asian Americans in Chicago. It will take effect as soon as the next council meeting in May. A growing number of lawmakers finally realized the importance of recognizing what Filipino World War II veterans have done for the U.S. After years of pushing the U.S. government to acknowledge their contributions, aging Filipino veterans are now more optimistic about the passing of the pending equity bill in Congress. Don Tagala was in downtown Chicago to join Filipino veterans to remember the bitter road they took during the Second World War. With the growing bipartisan support from U.S. congressmen and senators, Philippine World War II veterans celebrated a 65th commemoration of Bataan Day with optimism, a new hope that the pending Veterans Equity Bill be passed this year. Bataan Day pays tribute to thousands of Filipino and American soldiers who defended Bataan and Corregidor in the Philippines against the invading Japanese forces in 1942. Over 200,000 Filipino men were placed by that order under an American command to defend an American territory. They fought side by side with American soldiers through some of the most horrific battles of World War II. Many had their training cut short by the outbreak of the war. They were poorly supplied and poorly equipped, some going into battle with only surplus equipment from World War I. Though vastly outnumbered, these men were never outfought. I, I don't think and I don't I don't think we should forget. We should always remember what Bataan meant, the sacrifice of the Filipinos, the Americans, and uh, auxiliary troops that, that were involved in this great epic battle. While these Filipinos served and risked their lives for America during the war, the Resistance Act of 1946 prevented them from receiving full military benefits that was promised to them. Congress passed the Rescission Act of 1946, which stated that the service of Filipino soldiers would not be deemed active service under any law of the United States conferring rights, privileges, or benefits. With the pending bill now at the Veterans Affairs Committee of the House and Senate, if passed, this bill will restore full recognition and equity for the military service of these ailing war veterans. Uh, I believe this time around, the direction might be some positive movement on it after all these years. I would hope that there's bipartisan support for the Filipino veterans. Uh, they clearly deserve veterans' benefits, and they should have this. It's a shame that it has taken so long for them just to get to this point. It has been more than six decades since the Resistance Act stripped our Filipino veterans of their rights to full military benefits. But with the growing support from the House and the Senate, they are praying that this bill will be passed this year. I, I want to thank those Filipino veterans who fought in World War II. If it wasn't for them, who knows what the world would be like right now. Don Tagala, AAN News. Japanese and Chinese leaders met in Tokyo last week. The two nations pledged to work together on North Korea, energy development, and the environment. 
Despite bitter relations in the past, Japan and China agreed to rebuild their diplomatic relations. The two countries recently signed an agreement to lift Beijing's four-year ban on Japanese rice imports. Japanese officials said Prime Minister Shinzo Abe hoped to visit China this year and invited Chinese President Hu Jintao to come to Japan next year. To date, there are more than 800 civilian victims of political killings in the Philippines. In response to the ever-growing human rights violations under its current president, Filipino-American activists in Chicago launched a concert of awareness, condemning the killings. Don Gala reports from the field. <laughs> With the spate of political killings continuing to rise in the Philippines, Filipino-American activist groups in Chicago say stop the brutal killings now. Pintig Cultural Group and the Center for Immigrant Resources and Community Arts recently staged a concert of awareness denouncing the rising human rights violations in the Philippines. This event is called um, In Worship with uh, uh, In Worship and Struggle with Bishop Ramento. Um, we want to pay tribute to the life of the late Bishop Alberto Ramento. They say the bishop's strong criticism to the ongoing extrajudicial killings was the reason behind his murder. Ironically, Bishop Ramento met his death also in the same way. It's sad because parang what they're trying to do is to really silence people. You know, we have every right um, to associate ourselves. We have every right for a just wage. We have every right to live. We have a right to work. You know, and that's what Bishop Ramento is fighting for. Bishop Ramento was found dead inside the rectory of the church he was serving. Until now, no suspect has been found. Well, yeah, right now, and that's what we want. You know, with this tribute also, what we want is an investigation about the killings. That's what we want. Um, uh, and so far right now, this, the sad thing is it's not only him. There's about at least 800 political activists, cultural workers, human rights workers, students, priests um, uh, that are nanamatay uh, just until ngayong, mula nung 2001, ever since uh, Jamie was in power. So we want an investigation about that. Left-leaning activist groups have blamed the Philippine military for the extrajudicial killing since 2001. The alleged murders have been the subject of investigations of a Philippine government-created commission and recently by a subcommittee of the United States Senate and the United Nations. Don Tagawa, AAN News. Chicago will see the largest number of elections runoff in years on April 17th. A total of 12 wards are facing runoff elections held throughout the city, 11 involving current aldermen trying to hold on to their seats. But Asian Americans are closely watching the election on the 50th ward. Current alderman Bernie Stone has served the area, known for its large Asian community, for 33 years. He was just a few points shy of a clear win against Nazi Dolar, a Filipino-American candidate who could be the first Asian female alderman of Chicago. Dollar was director of City's Human Relations Advisory Council on Asian Affairs, but resigned to run for alderman. The argument goes both ways. Dollar feels Stone has gotten too comfortable in office, while Stone feels Dollar doesn't have what it takes to run for the 50th ward. The new set of Chicago aldermen will take their offices in May. Illinois Congressman Rahm Emanuel held a press conference along with the head of the Internal Revenue Service. Both are on a mission, not only to remind you to file before the April 17th deadline, but to make your life a lot simpler. Time's running out, and if you don't have your papers ready to file, don't panic. You can get an extension. Because you'll get in more trouble for not filing on time than filing a correction later. But there's one problem with these tax forms. Here's an example on the earned income tax credit. Enter the total of any net income from passive activities included on Schedule E, lines 26, 29A, column G, 34A, column D, and 40. If you can figure that out, you can go to postgraduate school. <laughs> No doubt, they're hard to read. The IRS data showed one in every four eligible taxpayers in Chicago are missing out on tax benefits and credits. That's why Congressman Rahm Emanuel wants to change the way taxes and government financial aid are done. Reduce that eight pages and 106 questions down to by 50% and put it in common English. I do not believe parents 
should lead to marital difficulty trying to get their kids a student loan so they can go to college. They've done everything right. But taking that con same concept of simplification, I want to bring that to the earned income tax credit and also to the higher education uh, credits that exist on the tax code. And while the congressman is working to create simpler forms, volunteer sites are open throughout the city to help you file your taxes. With a quarter of its population Asian Americans, students at the University of Illinois at Chicago find it hard to believe their school offers no Asian American studies program. The Asian American Coalition of UIC led another protest to push the administration to offer this ethnic studies on campus. Students say this would benefit not only Asian Americans, but the majority of its student population. Don Tagala filed this report. What do we want? Asian After a decade and a half of lobbying at the University of Illinois in Chicago, students may very soon go to class for a true Asian American Studies program. During the Speak Out rally, Liberal Arts and Sciences Dean Christopher Comer said the administration have received and committed to a plan to provide $225,000 to jumpstart new programs in Ethnic American Studies. So I think we're in a good position. We have a proposal before us now for establishing a minor in Asian American Studies. And we're very supportive of that. And here's the thing where it's very important you understand that your uh, involvement is going to determine what the ultimate outcome is. If that happens, the program is not in doubt. It will take place. Dean Comer said the college will also double the number of faculties for Asian American Studies in the next few months. A small victory for these student lobbyists. Well, that's really promising and we hope to, we hope that what he says is true and we, we, we feel that it is true. But we feel that the community and students still need to be involved to shape what our Asian American Studies program will look like. Well, I think we're getting close. Uh, the dean was just here and announced, uh, in fact, that it's not a question about whether there will be a program. He said there will be a program. And I think that's a very um, optimistic statement. And I look forward to working with the university. And I hope the students and other faculty will play a strong part in building a program here at UIC that will serve all students on campus. With a quarter of UIC students Asian Americans, many find it hard to believe that the school does not have a full Asian American Studies program at this time. I think that it is time, after all of the years, all of these years, for the administration to realize that such a large group of students can be ignored no longer. It is time for our university to make a commitment to prove to our Asian American students that we value their dedication to excellence and that we want to make them feel like they belong, just as much as any other group. It may not be long until an Asian American Studies major will be finally offered at the university. Don Tagala, AAN News. Still to come, a website where you can track down dangerous drivers. Don't miss out on our exclusive interview with young Korean rapper Jin and find out what brings Philippines' hottest star to the Windy City. All up next on AAN. Driving in the city can be challenging sometimes, but don't take it out on the street. Instead, go online and express yourself. You might even help others along the way. One website is helping commuters across the nation to flag one another for dangerous driving. Is your car flagged? There's only one way to find out. PlateWire.com is the website where you can post messages about other drivers and find out what others say about you. It's free and quite simple. Choose the state of your car's license plate and type in your numbers. In a matter of seconds, you'll find out if someone has been talking behind your back, or in this case, behind your car. But it's not only negative feedbacks. The website allows you to praise or perhaps spark a little romance by sending a wink to a license plate. Brace yourselves, gas prices topped $3 a gallon last week, and with the summer driving season just around the corner, it won't get any cheaper. Oil prices were traded around $64 per barrel last Friday. The International Energy Agency warned that oil foot production by OPEC had fallen to its lowest level in more than two years. Experts also blame skyrocketing gas prices on problems at several refineries in the nation and the ever-increasing demand from U.S. drivers. 
Well, time is money in Hong Kong, and train commuters were upset over signal problems that caused subway trains to be delayed. One Hong Kong radio station said shuttle buses were dispatched to fix the 45-second delay that went on for two hours. So instead of taking two minutes before the next train arrived, it took two minutes and 45 seconds too long. In other news, although one artist has been off the mainstream radar for some time, Asian-American rapper Jin isn't as concerned with fame as he is with his music. Our Elaine Lowe has more. Chinese-American rapper Jin stopped by Chicago last week for a concert at UIC. And we sat down with the former Rough Rider in an exclusive interview from AAN. What I've been doing in the last year or two is uh, just continuing to make music and put it out, but on a more, I guess, s smaller scale, you know, not as, like, big as, like, Rough Riders Presents, you know, like, me and my partner, we started our own label, uh, not even just a label, but, like, a, a company in general um, called Crafty Plugs. That's the name of, of our label, slash company, slash entity, whatever you want to call it. But, um... And we've just been putting out these records, like independently, more grassroots. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the promotions are more grassroots. The, uh, just the overall, overall s scope is just more contained and, you know, kind of on a smaller scale, which uh, has its, you know, pros and cons, like your resources are a little more limited, you know, but at the end of the day, you're able to have, I don't want to say more, but total creative control of just the whole thing. Quite honestly, this album would probably be my best work, like, to date. Um, you know, and I say that because I just look back on the last couple of years and look at all of the different highs and lows and how it, you know, how it translated into my music, you know, and I, I was able to kind of see, for the most part, just from the people like that follow my music and even ones that don't necessarily follow it, what were the, the songs and, and what direction was the direction that they gravitated towards the most. This year in particular, like oh, 2007, it's just a very kind of monumental year for me personally because um, I turned 25 this year. So, you know, like, and you just look at that and, you know, and I look back like, wow, you know, I kind of broke onto the scene when I was 19 you know, and just the time that's, you know, transpired and it's like definitely not the 19 year old from BET anymore, you know, like this is, this is big, it's a big step. So that made me kind of do a little bit more evaluation just as far as where I, what do I want to do and what do I want to say with my music? So all of this stuff carries into this album. I have, the, the name of this album actually is called From This Day On. And um, it's, it's just, it's, it's, I don't even know how to describe it. Like the first song that, that I'm putting out is a record called Open Letter to Obama. Yeah. I don't want to say that it's going to be like excessively politically over, you know, like it's not political, political. That Jin is definitely not turning into like no political rapper. But, uh, I think the rec that song relates to the record because I think this record uh, will probably be my most socially relevant one. Probably show the most growth. Like, not only as an artist, but I think just as a young man. From AAN News, Elaine Lowe. A new grassroots movement for presidential candidate Barack Obama has been steadily gaining ground in the Asian American community. South Asians for Obama, or SAFO, recently launched two chapters last week in LA and New York. The group hopes to gain support from more South Asian American voters in a push for the senator to become president in 2008. The junior senator from Illinois ranks as the second most popular choice for the Democratic nomination. Every year, thousands of Filipinos come to the U.S. in search of a better life. But it was the other way around for this young Filipino-American from Ohio. Sam Milby came home to visit Philippines for the first time, and there he found fame and fortune in the TV and movie industry. Our Don Tagala has the special coverage. While most Filipinos come to the U.S. to fulfill their American dream, 
Ohio native Sam Milby came to the Philippines instead and made it big as one of the hottest young stars in Philippine show business. to Manila only for a vacation, a trip to the homeland that turned his life around when he landed a modeling job. When I did close up the commercial, I thought that was like the most amazing thing for me. Right? And then um, one thing I always like, always wished I could do was like just one billboard. Just one billboard. Like even kahit parang sa likod lang. Pero nasa billboard lang. He is one of the most sought after actors on TV and the big screen. And now even concerts. I, I never ever ever expected in my whole life that, that this would ever happen to me. So, <laughs> But stood up if you're prepared. At the same time, parang I wasn't prepared. I didn't, I didn't take any acting classes, no singing classes, no, 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 uh, no classes at all. Milby, together with another Filipino star, Piola Pascual, had the fans screaming in a recent sold-out concert at the Pickwick Theater in Park Ridge, Illinois. Everywhere they went, Filipino-American fans just can't seem to get enough of their honky idols who happens to be two of the hottest Philippine stars to hit Chicago. Don Tagala, AAN News. Chicago's very own India TV held an awards night to mark their 11th anniversary. Special guests and dignitaries like Lieutenant Governor Pat Quinn were seen among the crowd. The celebration featured more than 150 local talents of all ages and from all over Illinois. Namaste. State Treasurer Alexei Janolias and Lieutenant Governor Pat Quinn, along with several Indian community leaders, began the celebration with a traditional lamp lighting ceremony. We really admire the Indian American community right here. India TV also gave a Lifetime Achievement Award to a professor at Harold Washington College. Professor Valin Shah lost his vision from childhood, but that didn't stop him from getting a master's degree and helping the disabled in India. <laughs> People of all ages took part in a showcase of talent, from dancing to singing. India TV's awards night not only brought together family and friends, it also brought cultural awareness to the young Indian generation. KBC AAN News reaches all of Chicago land, different Asian communities, China, Japan, Vietnam, India, Thailand, Korea, Indonesia, and more. We are the link of Asian American viewers and the source for your Asian information, covering events, news, and issues. Be a part of Chicago's only Asian American programming. Advertise your business with KBC's AAN News.